So Netflix has a new show all about the drug war that's ongoing in the Philippines. Now, I wanted to give some context because if you're watching the show, it's very immersive, but I don't think they do a good job of, of letting you know where this is happening, when this is happening, and why it's such a, such a controversial issue. So if you read articles about the show, a lot of them say, is Netflix's new show glorifying? And you think they're going to say gangs, drugs, these are the things commonly we think about these shows glorifying, but no, it's the opposite. They say, is Netflix's new show glorifying the president of the Philippines, his war on drugs. Now, the president, Rodrigo Duterte, he won election in 2016 promising that he was going to solve the drug problem. And he launched this very, very aggressive war on drugs that killed a couple thousand people. Now, this is not all the cops and, and the people that, you know, the president's responsible for doing all the killing. A lot of the killing is by gangs and other criminals, but probably 5,000 people in total have died. And incredibly controversial issue, gets a lot of coverage in the foreign press, and why? There's a couple main issues. One, the president himself, he doesn't seem to make much of a distinction between the addict and the user of drugs and the drug dealer. And this is kind of, this is hallowed, you know, you know, not ground. This is, this is, it's very taboo to not make any kind of distinction. Now, in, in North American politics, for instance, you can be very, very aggressive on, on crime and, and we gotta we gotta stamp out the scourge of drugs, but you've always gotta be clear and make a distinction between drug users and addicts who are victims and the pushers, the sellers who you can be very aggressive about about the drug dealers. But even low level dealers sometimes sometimes politicians will be very clear, okay, we don't mean you know, low level dealers who are involved in it for poverty reasons. We're talking about the big kahunas, the masterminds. Those are the people you can be very very aggressive against, but Duterte, he doesn't make that much of a distinction a lot of the times. There's one very famous quote where he says, all these three million addicts that are in that are in my country, I would kill them all if I could. Now, again, he's not saying dealer, he's saying he's he's saying addicts. At another point he says, these addicts, their parents, they can, their parents can't kill them because it's too painful to kill your own kid. So you have to kill them. So again, all these statements not making that distinction that a lot of people think is a very, very important distinction to make. Also, his harsh penalties where a lot of the times he talks as if these people dealing drugs or even the people using drugs are worthy of death, either the death penalty officially or just vigilantes taking them out. Now, a lot of people would consider even people who sell drugs they would say the death penalty well a lot of people just consider the death penalty full stop even the most horrific heinous crimes the death penalty is barbaric we should never do it so when you have someone who's seems to be advocating the death penalty for some would say victimless crimes of just selling drugs or using drugs obviously other people would say it's not victimless people think that's that's horrible because again a lot of people just agree with the disagree with the death penalty full stop let alone for what some would consider minor crimes. And then the other issue is this issue of vigilantism, where he'll say things, the president will say public statements that seem to be encouraging ordinary civilians that it's part of your responsibility, maybe not your responsibility, but if you do take it upon yourself to go out and start fighting this drug war and start stamping out the scourge of our, our society, I'm fully behind you. And obviously a lot of people have problems with vigilantism. And then the lack of due process, where the president will say things like, the police, they have my full support, I'm fully behind them, and people argue that statements like this, it makes the police feel like they can operate with impunity, and that if the police do break the law themselves in fighting in fighting this drug war, that the president is going to stand behind them. And um, this dictator in the Philippines, Ferdinand Marcos, the president, Duterte, will say things like, he's the greatest president, we should honor him, so when... He says things like that. It makes it seem like at the highest levels in the Philippines, there's not a lot of respect for rule of law. And there's the idea that, that order and, and public order and safety is more important than any kind of due process. And when the president makes these very fiery statements and whips people up and creates this climate, and then also what Duterte is, well, he'll go on TV and in his, his military uniform, and he'll read off the names of, of police and judges that he say are corrupt and are working with these gangs. And you say you, you combine these factors where you whip up this this climate of fear, and then you also name people. It makes it seem like like you're you're somewhat making a situation where ordinary people could get very mad, very ginned up, 
and also think that there's no rule of law and there's no repercussions. And if, if they do take the law into their own hands, they're going to be defended by the, the cops and even the president at the highest levels. And if you want to understand the climate of fear that exists, fascinating if you read about how many people have voluntarily turn themselves in so what the the president will do the police will do is they'll they'll fi- they'll get a list together of suspected suspected drug users suspected criminals they'll give it to a to a community they'll give it to the police in a local community and they'll say look these people on this list they have so many hours to turn themselves in voluntarily if they don't the police will come after come after you and so many people they're so scared because they feel like they're not going to get arrested and taken in alive. They feel like the police are going to chase them down and just murder them. So an astounding number, hundreds of thousands of people have voluntarily turned themselves in. Way more people than have actually have actually been arrested. So again, just fascinating how there really is, it, there is, there is fear in, in the hearts of criminals, but also likely of, of ordinary people. And that's another problem when you have these climates of fear, whether it's this old Soviet Union uh, French Revolution, the Reign of Terror. Now, I'm not saying these are the same, but in these situations where there's all this fear, you can have someone who looks at their neighbor and they don't like their neighbor for whatever reason. And then they just tell the police, hey, that neighbor, he's a big drug pusher. He's, he's part of the scourge. And then there's such a climate of fear. There's a lack of due process. That neighbor's carted off. You never hear from that neighbor again. And so many people are dying. So many people are being arrested. There's so much going on. No one's going to notice if, if, if someone here or there, it's not really true. And it's just someone who has it out for them and is using this as an excuse to get rid of their, their adversaries. And then Duterte, he's a controversial figure, even putting aside the drug war stuff, just some of his public comments. He's compared himself to, to numerous dictators, I think just two, Hitler and, and Idi, Idi Amin, and said things that seemed to, seemed to jokingly um, compare himself to, to those dictators or say he doesn't mind those, those comparisons horrible comment he made um the very famous rape case when he was the mayor so this is how he got to start in politics he's the mayor of a town and he um i think this is true that he really did crack um clamp down on crime and crime was qu- crime was very low in his in his town and that's one of the reasons why people thought that he could do that on a on a, a nationwide scale the very famous rape case in his town and he was i think joking later he said he wasn't joking and he said yeah, it was a shame. I think that the mayor should have got to go first. Just horrible, horrible comment, um, even even in joke. So, and then even the comments about the drug war itself, the things he says, we're going to fatten fatten the fish in the, in the in the seas with the bodies of these criminals, and we won't stop until every last drug user, every last drug pusher, is either in jail or dead, or things like saying like he killed someone. He said that he he killed someone when he was 16 years old. And I could go on so many controversial comments. Now you got to be aware that there is the issue of translation. So always when you're reading these these news stories, you got to be aware of of biases. And sometimes people like to sensationalize and and paint things in a certain light. And when you're translating um, a foreign leader, their comments, there's a huge issue where you got to choose which word you're going to pick because there's always there's always synonyms different words have different connotations um in one country compared to the other so you got to be careful but nonetheless i i think that you you do get an accurate idea even if one or two of these controversial comments may be a bit exaggerated or a bit taken out of context on the whole i don't think the characterization of him is is unfair i think he's pretty clearly a a guy who says a lot of colorful things at best at worst a lot of deeply offensive things now is there is there an actual problem? I think most people would say yes, there is a, is a problem with drugs in the Philippines, in particular meth. So that's the, that's the drug where there's a big problem. Why meth? Meth is unique where you can manufacture meth anywhere in the world if you just have the right, the right materials versus something like cocaine. Cocaine, there's only one place to get it. South America is where all the, all the cocaine in the world is made and then it's got to be transported out versus meth. You can make meth in Canada. You can make meth in the United States. You can't make cocaine in, in Canada. You can't make cocaine in, in the United States. So the the big drug, the drug problem is meth. Is there a crime problem? Now, if you look at official crime statistics, sometimes it doesn't seem like there is a problem. Now, I will say some of the articles I read, very disingenuous, they'll compare, they'll compare rape statistics in the Philippines to Sweden. Is the, people love using Sweden. 
because the definition of rape is so much so much broader in Sweden and the rates of reporting are so much higher in Sweden there's going to be it's it's so silly to compare and you're comparing apples and oranges so i think any article that that makes a comparison of rapes in Sweden versus rapes in, in the Philippines you got to be very skeptical of everything else that person who wrote that article says because that's a bad argument people on both sides it's not just on this issue that people anybody who who does these comparisons with Sweden and, and, and rapes be that's a tactic to 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 spin something so so be careful with that now what's in the und, undeniable is the the president Duterte he has very high approval rating generally but also very high approval rating on this issue in particular so whether or not there is an actual crime problem in the Philippines I think it's undeniable that there's a perception that there is a crime problem in the in the Philippines now whether that's an actual reality um I don't know. No, why does the president have such high approval ratings? Could be part of, I think, a, a global trend of, you could say, authoritarian, or at the very least, these kind of populist, anti-establishment candidates. And you see this in a lot of different countries. I think it's enough to constitute kind of global backlash against the established order, the established way of doing things. Also, it could be a cultural factor for sure. If you look at, I don't know about Asians, as a, as an ethnicity, I don't know if you'd if you'd look at Asian Americans and find that they have um, stricter attitudes towards drugs, but certainly if you look at Asian countries, if you look at East Asian countries, those are some of the the countries with the toughest anti drug policies. You look at Thailand with their drug war, Singapore. These are very these are countries with very strict laws generally, but in particular against drugs. So you could say that just that there, there's cultural factors at play there. And talking about the show in particular, some of the things that jump out at you. You see the, the uncle, the, the, the cop uncle in particular, really roughing up um, his nephew when, when he catches his nephew with drugs and looks abusive and it's jarring. But you start to think of if you were a father and your son started getting involved with drugs, if you're in a country like North American country, United States, Canada, it's horrible. You, you'd feel such fear and so, so out of control and, and so worried about, about your son and, and, and his safety. But if you were in a country like the Philippines with this ongoing drug war where there's so much violence and so much killing going on and you felt like your son getting involved with drugs was potentially a death sentence, how tempted you would be to do anything to to knock some sense into them and, and to get them to go on a different path and, and what wouldn't you do? So I think you, you see the the hard, very hard approach that, that the uncle's taking and, and you can find it pretty justified and you say, you know, I don't know if it's the right thing to do, but it's it's understandable, you know, wanting to do anything because you feel like it really is a, a life and death thing. And drugs is always serious and potentially life and death, but in this current climate in the Philippines, so much more so. And then you think about typical shows where you see a lot of a lot of drugs and gangs, old mafia shows with the with the fashion or newer shows with the with the style. Here you see the same the same gangs and snitches and those kind of elements, but you see just the utter the utter poverty and there's no style, there's no fashion. Everyone's wearing just just cotton, uh, cotton shirts that are the same color, and it's just such a different, grittier feel. And you see people get killed, and just the cardboard they'll they'll put the cardboard on the body and just write with the sharpie. They might write snitch or they might write drug user, drug pusher, and very striking to see that, and it's true. You read about it in articles that this is something that that happens. Not only are, are vigilantes killing people, but then they they put the put the cardboard to try to make it more of a warning to to other people.